Hi everyone, this is Mr. Trio, and today's video will focus on our third focus point in the series, how effectively did the United States contain the spread of communism? The third focus point is, why did America become involved in Vietnam? Now, one of the things that I'd like to bring to your attention before we actually get into some of the content is that the issue of Vietnam in the United States is a sensitive topic. Even after 50 years, it's something that really grips Americans. In Washington, D.C., perhaps the most moving of all the memorials is the one to the Vietnam War, in which it is a wall that contains the names of all the service people who were killed in Vietnam. There are over 58,000 names that are upon this wall. And it is one of those places that when you visit, you see older people um, taking uh, engravings from the wall, leaving mementos, uh, flowers, and it's perhaps one of the most somber memorials in the country. Today, one of the objectives that I hope to capture is why this is such an incredibly sensitive topic for Americans. And the other aspect that I want to bring out is that although more than 50,000 Americans were killed in action and countless number were also wounded, the effects upon the war in Vietnam were even greater. It is estimated that over a million civilians and soldiers were killed during this time period. There are three big ideas that we will explore that go hand in hand with the larger issue of how the U.S. contain communism. They contain our domino theory. As you may remember, this is a theory that could also be applied to our topic on Cuba and also on the topic of Korea. We're going to talk about the important concept of escalation of involvement, how the United States started off very uh, small in being involved in Vietnam, and then over time grew the number of forces, soldiers, and influence in Vietnam. And then we're going to talk about how the war ended and how the United States was able to get out of the war slowly and the reasons behind why it withdrew from Vietnam in the 1970s. When we talk about the domino theory, specifically today, we are going to be referring to Southeast Asia. The major influence in this area, of course, is China, and the People's Republic of China was really the first major nation to convert to communism in the 1940s. And the countries which involve Vietnam, Cambodia, Burma, which is now known as Myanmar, Laos, and Thailand, were the ones that the United States was most concerned about because they felt that China and, to a lesser degree, the Soviet Union had a great deal of influence on these emerging nations after the Second World War and the idea that if one of them fell to communism, that the others would fall as well. And American influence in the area would then be diminished. So let's begin with a short history of Vietnam. Vietnam, like many countries in Southeast Asia, had a long history of being controlled by other nations. In particular, the French, which were heavily involved in uh, Southeast Asia, which was often referred to as French Indochina at the time. In 1954, the French were forced out of Vietnam by the emerging Communist Party under the leadership of Ho Chi Minh. Vietnam at this time was partitioned into two parts, a northern part controlled by the Communists and a southern part which was controlled by a democratic nation, um, leadership. Now, if this sounds somewhat familiar, keep in mind that this is essentially the same storyline that we learned about in Korea. 
a temporary partition that divided an ethnic nation into two areas. And this division is solely being made for the ideology of the type of government in which they have. It is during this time period that America begins to support the leadership in the South. And as we talk a little bit more, we'll talk about how they become more and more involved with their influence, providing supplies, and then later um, military troops to the South. Starting in 1959, under the leadership of President Eisenhower, he's the one, if you remember, who came up with the concept of the domino theory, they began to put troops into Vietnam. Later, under President Kennedy, more and more, and then finally by the time that President Johnson comes to power in 1968, there are over 500,000 American troops serving in this small nation in Southeast Asia. Once again, the big question that we have is why would America want to be involved in Vietnam? What was it about Vietnam that America felt that it needed to have this large presence? One of the other things which I think is very important is that with all this military support, and especially with the technologies of things such as advanced weapons, helicopters, did this influence make any difference in Vietnam? Were the Americans able to contain communism or push them back altogether? Ultimately, the answer is that they weren't able to do that. And we'll talk a little later about why they were unsuccessful. One of the first areas that really upset uh, Vietnamese people is that this North and South divide, which was come up, they came up with, uh, once again, is a completely arbitrary uh, division. The people in the north of Vietnam and the people in the south of Vietnam are not different. They speak the same language. They're a part of the same culture. And as a result, many families were divided. Some of their family was in the north, some of their family was in the south. And that division created a lot of consternation. One of the things that was also very important is that people were tied directly to the land. It was the land in which their families perhaps had been buried, and it held very important religious meaning to Vietnamese people. And now, with the division, families were being told that they couldn't go to the area where they grew rice on a regular basis. They couldn't visit the shrines of their family. So the division had a lot of social issues for Vietnamese people. Religious leaders were perhaps uh, the most vocal in this partition and the division. And there were terrible instances in which Vietnamese monks actually would burn themselves in protest in public spaces. It's also important to point out that with the rise of conflict between the North and the South, that there were pockets of groups that were able to infiltrate uh, each other. And perhaps the most important is the National Liberation Front. And it is during this time that they're able to recruit, especially young men, to join the National Liberation Front and infiltrate areas in the South and essentially fight for the communist government. And it was incredibly difficult for the members of the South to combat this approach because once again, these individuals are ethnically the same as the people in the South. So it was incredibly difficult to determine who was a friend and who was an enemy. In 1968, the United States essentially starts to see 
that their influence is not making a difference. And slowly at that time, America begins to withdraw its military support in Vietnam. Why did Americans begin to withdraw? First, under President Johnson, later under President Nixon, and finally under President Ford. The first turning point was the Tet Offensive of 1968. If you're familiar with Tet, this is essentially in Vietnam, their New Year celebration. And there were many people that were in the South who felt that with a holiday such as this, that nothing would actually be happening. However, the North um, Vietnamese um, brought about an offensive in Saigon. Saigon, by the way, is the city which is now known as Ho Chi Minh City. And this offensive, although not very successful against the American embassy there, it essentially helped to show that this desire to fight back was still very strong. Also, in the United States at this time, there was incredible amount of protest against the war. And many of these protests were being conducted by college students on campuses all over the United States. Many of these college students asked the question, why is the United States sending men and women to fight in Vietnam? Of course, many of the people who were protesting were approximately the age of the men and women that were being sent to Vietnam. Another very important influence that helped to turn the tide against the war in the United States is that this was essentially the very first war that was broadcast on television every night. And Americans in the evening would watch television, including this man, Walter Cronkite, who was perhaps the most famous news broadcaster of the day, and essentially see what was happening. And once again, they would ask the question, is it worth it to send our American troops halfway around the world in order to fight for people that we don't know? One of the things that was often reported on the news were things such as war crimes. Videos showing American soldiers burning villages or rice fields or people that were being executed. And for Americans who were isolated from the war, this glimpse into what was happening in Vietnam really helped to change people's opinion about how involved America should be in the war. The last thing I want to mention is the Viet Cong, of course, in which, uh, once again, these are individuals who were fighting for the North, but were in the South, and they were very persistent in able to uh, commit things like sabotage against American troops, and they were very resilient, creating all sorts of different types of ways to infiltrate the American forces in the South, including um, building tremendous tunnels underneath the city in order to hide and escape. Many of these tunnels can still be visited today if you visit uh, the Vietnam Memorial Museum in Ho Chi Minh City. So that essentially brings us to the end of this presentation, the American involvement in Vietnam. Once again, one of the questions that will come up a great deal is about why did America feel that it was so important to be in Vietnam and commit all those resources and the lives of its soldiers for this cause. Thanks for watching the video and as always we'll discuss more in class.